It's manish tarata sharatan laysa fi kitab illa. This is a principle that everyone should apply, including yourself. That do not impose in anything that you do in your life. Do not impose in anything that you do a condition that you do not find that condition in the book. So alhamdulillah, you have just proven that the sunnah takes us back to the Qur'an. The sunnah tells us go to the Qur'an and see the laws that are in the Qur'an. Whatever laws you find there, don't apply it to, uh, if it's not in the book of Allah, don't apply it to your life. This is a principle that everyone should apply, including yourself. That do not impose in anything that you do in your life. Do not impose in anything that you do a condition that you do not find that condition in the book. So alhamdulillah, you have just proven that the sunnah takes us back to the Qur'an. The sunnah tells us go to the Qur'an and see the laws that are in the Qur'an. Whatever laws you find there, don't apply it to, uh, if it's not in the book of Allah, don't apply it to your life. Assalamualaikum ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, peace be upon you all. But I'll be lying in a shaitan regime. I seek refuge with Allah is the accused devil. Woman, I son a call and mean man da ila lahi wa amila salihan wa kala in the limit al muslimin. And who is better in speech than one who invites to God and act righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims, submitters. Hazi sabili adu ila la ala basiratin ana wa mani tabani wa suba ana lahi wa ma ana min al mushrikin. This is my way I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me and glory be to Allah for I am not among the idolaters. Al haqqu mi rabbikum fa man sha fal yu'min wa man sha fal yakhfu. The truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Ya yu al amanu taqulla wa kunu ma'as sadiqin. O you who believe, beware of God, and be with those who are honest. That is, those who are truthful. Um, so uh, today our, our program, or the topic of discussion for today has to do with sharia uh some people will say sharia law the word the word sharia sharia is a it's an arabic word right uh -huh. yeah salam tujis uh salam muhammad fussein yeah peace be upon you timothy williams yeah good afternoon uh vora vora yes <clears throat> Oh, somebody is trying to. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Uh, yes. Salam, Nur. Nur. Okay. Please be upon you all. Thank you all for coming. So today we are going to see the topic, the notion of Sharia in Islam. So when we say people, you most of many a times you hear people saying Sharia law, Sharia law, Sharia law, Sharia law, right? Uh -huh. So I'm going to break the instance so that we understand the notion of Sharia in the, in the according to the book of God, Quran, right? Uh huh. So uh, before we move on, many a times when they say Sharia law, according to the mainstream understanding, the mainstream Muslims, or I would say the sectarians, they, 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 team is as, they term it as the code of law derived from the Quran and from the teachings and examples of the Prophet Muhammad. This is how they understand what Sharia law should be like. And today we are going to see if it actually denotes that instance they are talking about or not. <clears throat> now, you should know, understand that every law 
concerning our lives has to do with God. It's not about people, what people think, it's about what God says. That is the number one objective, first of all. So if we say Sharia, we have to understand it from the godly perspective, not from people's perspective. It has to be from God's perspective. Because in the first place, he is the one who uh, legislates for us, right? Uh -huh. So if he, he is the one who gives us legislation, then we have to take our laws from him. Just like in a country, in a constitution, you have a government who gives you legislation, like who legislate for you. So the government is only entitled to be the ones to mandate certain things in the country. Uh, it doesn't have to go by the individual you know, to put for such rules. So if people get to understand these notions, things will become easier and clearer for them. So for example, uh, let me just put this on the screen and share it so that people will, will, will see uh, what I'm talking about. Now, uh, let me see, I shared a screen uh, my notes body here. So let me share screen. Mm. <clears throat> now, what do we say Sharia is a code of law derived from the Quran and from the teachings and example of Prophet Muhammad. This is according to the mainstream Muslims. This is not according to God. This is what you should understand. This is according to the mainstream Muslims, not according to God. So bear in mind, put that at the back of your head. And uh, I'll be coming to that later on in the program in order to, to, to denote something for you, right? Okay, good. Yeah. Uh-huh. So the mainstream Muslims, they will term Sharia, when we say Sharia, which is an Arabic word, we, you can find it in Quran chapter 45, verse 18, the word Sharia. So it is a noun, which means law, right? Uh -huh. So Sharia is an Arabic word. It's not an English word. It, is just, it has just been Romanized and written Sharia, right? So you will hear many a times people saying Sharia law, Sharia law, Sharia law. Sharia means law. That is it. <laughs> uh -huh. So there is no notion of Sharia law, Sharia. No, Sharia, it means law. So every country has Sharia. Do You have your own laws that you deal with. Uh -huh. So according to the mainstream understanding, the code of law derived from the Quran and from the teachings and example of Prophet Muhammad, which the sectarians will say that is the Sunnah. So they will say Quran and Sunnah. So according to them, there's two sources of laws, not only one. Which is a which is a, a, a which has a problem. This this act of understanding, there's a problem with that. Now, when we take the the word law, I'm going to put it here, then we understand what law means. If I put the word law here, then when we say law, uh, let me maximize it here, yeah. number one and number three, right? Good. So when we say law, the collection of rules imposed by authority, that is number one. That is the definition of the word law as a noun, right? It's a noun. So law. The collection of rules imposed by authority. We all know if there is any law in Islam, it has to be with God. Because in the dinner, in the Lail Islam, the religion is from God. So Quran chapter 5, verse 3, he says, Aliyawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum nimati wa raditu lakum al Islam adina. So today I have completed my blessing upon you. Uh, I have completed the religion for you and completed my blessings upon you and have approved Islam as a religion for you, right? As a deen for you, religion. So that is a legislation. He has enacted or legislated for you. So if he has approved it, it becomes a law for you. So the collection of rules imposed by authority, 
we all know that all, the only authority we have in Islam is God. He makes the final decision. Nobody else. Nobody else. Every prophet, every messenger who has to make a decision has to be based on what God says. Quran chapter 21 verse 27. For anybody who wants to know that the messengers cannot do or the prophet don't have rights to impose their own rules. Go to Quran chapter 21 verse 27. They do not uh, uh, overtake him or precede him in command, but they do as he has commanded them. You understand? So the second meaning of law, we can say or we say is what? It's a legal document setting forth rules governing a particular kind of activity. So when we come to Islam, we have a legal document, which is the what? The Quran. That's a legal go the, uh, document God has given us which is to set forth rules governing a particular kind of activity. So we have rules from the Quran governing our conduct on how to do things. And that is what is meant by Sharia in Arabic, right? The third meaning is a rule or body of rules of conduct inherit in human nature and essential to or binding upon human society. That is the third meaning of the word law right aha uh -huh. so all these three meanings fall in the criteria of what we call sharia and they all they are all in line with what the quran proposes for us right good so let's move on aha uh -huh. so i've taken you through just to show you the notion of what we say sharia which is the arabic word for the english word law right aha uh -huh. yes uh muhammad gaddafi let me just save your question i'll come to the question later uh it's not time for questions and answers so i don't want to be distracted so i've saved it i'll answer the question later okay uh -huh. Peace be upon you, all those who are coming. Davis, Mark, uh, Nash, Bayan, uh, Alfred, Ege, Kwe. Uh, there is Tonya, uh, Tawana, Faiz, Yakub. You are all welcome. Mohamed Sani, thank you all. You are all welcome. Uh -huh. so, so when you say Sharia law, Sharia is an Arabic word which means law, right? So yours is just to know the meaning. Don't let these people define what Sharia means. No. You have to go back to the Quran and see where it all evolves. The only Sharia given to the Prophet is, the Quran, is found in the Quran. It's not outside the Quran. That is the only law he has been given, which can be found in the Quran. And that is the only judgment, hukmah, he has been given which is found in the Quran. So you go to Quran chapter 45, verse 18, and Quran chapter what? 13, verse 37. You find the judgment and you find the law in the Quran. It's not outside. So bear in mind. Huh? Mm. Uh, that is also i'll be coming to your question uh, uh bashir yusuf i'll be coming to your question i've saved it so i'll come to that when it's time for questions and answers aha uh -huh. so let's move on with the topic so that i can break down things so the first legislation that god has given us the first thing as human beings that god has created us what he has given us as a law right a law like I already defined what is law for you, the collection of rules imposed by authority. That is the number one meaning of law. So the authority comes from God and God is the main authority. So he imposed the collection of rules that we have to abide by, right? Uh -huh. So when, we, when I take you to Quran chapter 42, verse 13 to verse 15, Quran chapter 42, that is uh, Surah to Shura, then I take you to verse 13 to verse 15. <clears throat> and let's see what the verse says, right? Uh, if I may, let me let me see if I can share it on the screen. And we see what the verses say. So Quran chapter 42, 
verse 13 to verse 15. That is Surah to Shura. Uh, I'll put it on the screen and I give you what the verse says step by step. Right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So the verse says, Shara alakum mina dini ma wasabihi nuhan wallazi awhayna ilayka wa ma wasayna bihi Ibrahima wa Musa wa Isa an akimu dina then he says wala tatafarraku fihi kabra ala almushrikina ma tad'uhum ilayhi allahu yajtabi ilayhi man yasha wa yadi ilayhi man you need so first of all the verse 13 is telling us god is telling us in verse 13 he says he has what legislated for for you so the word shara'a is a verb shara'a is a verb which which denotes the the root word of what sharia a law so the word shara'a is to give legislation to legislate for to enact something so he god he has legislated for you you the people of the religion which he has he which he advised to noah and which we have inspired to you that is muhammad he is the second person pronoun who received the quran and which we advise to abraham moses and jesus that establish the religion the deen establish it and do not be separated therein you see uh, salam sister Abu Bashir. Uh -huh. So this inaction that God has done, the legislation God has given us of the religion, God started by mentioning Noah. He didn't mention Adam. He didn't mention any other prophet prior to Noah. He mentioned he started mentioning Noah. So it means the legislation of the deen only started with Noah. It didn't start before Noah. So it he, he gave the legislation of the deen which he advised to noah which he advised to muhammad alayhi salam which he uh, advised to abraham alayhi salam musa alayhi salam and isa alayhi salam that establish the religion the deen and do not be separated therein just as we see separations all over today right there's separation all over because people don't want to abide by the rules that god has given god gives rule is not sufficient for them they prefer somebody else to give legislation so that is the problem i cannot be in a company whereby i know the boss and i know the boss is in charge then i will let somebody else be giving me instructions when it has not been authorized by the boss so there's a problem so then god says establish the religion and do not be separated therein then god says it is difficult for the uh, idolaters, that is the mushriks, it's difficult for them. The act of separation, they have to separate. Quran chapter 30, verse 31 to 32. God is telling us, Munibina ilayhi, what the who? Uh, then he says, Wakimu salat. Then he says, Wakimu salat. Then he says, Walata kunna na min al mushrikin. Then he says, Min al lazina farraku di nahum, wakanu shiaha. Then he says, Kulli hizbin bima ladayhi farihum. That is Quran chapter 30, verse 31 to 32. God is clearly telling us that we should be repentant to him and have reference for him. And then establish the salat and to not be among the mushriks. Who are the mushriks? Verse 32 says, Among those who have differentiated their religion and become what? Sects. God, first of all, says, do not differentiate your religion. Do not separate your religion. Do not divide your religion. Then we have people who will tag themselves Ali Sunnah, Tijaniya, Shia, Ahmadiyya, Kadiriya. This is division. So somebody will be asking, ah, are these people not aware of the laws? Remember, laws are meant to be broken. So even if a country set forth laws, rules, legislate for you, 
people will still break laws because they are rebellious. You understand? Uh -huh. So mushriks, in, in terms of religion, mushriks are the number one people to break this rule, uh, rule that we shouldn't be separated. Mushriks will always separate because they can't stand for God being the, the lawgiver alone. It doesn't work for them that way. So then God says, it is difficult for the mushriks what you invite them there to. It's difficult. God chooses whomever he wills to eat, to eat the deen, to eat, and guides whoever repents to him. You understand? He needs your repentance. We all do mistakes. We all have been one way or the other, either a, a, an ignorant person, a kafir, a mushrik we have been before. I was once a Sunni myself because the type of belief I uphold, upheld was a Sunni concept, right? So I've been a mushrik before. Yes. Uh -huh. So the point is, but I did it out of ignorance. I wasn't aware. So when God enlightened me, it didn't become a difficult choice for me to actually stick to God alone, right? It didn't become difficult. So God chooses whomever, whomever he wills to eat, right? Now, then verse 14, Quran chapter 42, verse 14, God says, وَمَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاهُمُ الْإِلْمُ بَغِيَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَلَوْلَا كَلِمَةُ سَبَكَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ إِلَى أَجَلِ مُسَمَّى لَكُدِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ Then he says, أُورِثُ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ لَفِي شَكٍ مِنْهُ مُرِيدٍ so God says, and they did not separate if, uh, except after what had come to them of the knowledge. Whenever there comes to pe uh, people knowledge, this is where division starts, differences arises. Because knowledge is any factual information that you know, any piece of information that you know, right? That is knowledge. Now, out of injustice between them, and if not a word had proceeded from your Lord for a fixed term, he will have judged or settled between them. Indeed, those who inherited the Al-Kitab, the book, after them are in doubt there of being suspicious. So those who inherited the book after this list of prophets God mentioned are always in doubt. Right? Those who inherited the book after Muhammad, those who inherited the book after Jesus, those who inherited the book after Moses, those who inherited the book after Abraham, Noah, they are always in doubt. So then we go to verse 15. Then God says, Falizalika uh, fadu'u. So he says, so invite to that. And then Fadu Uhu, God is talking to a second person pronoun. It wasn't talking, he wasn't talking to everybody. He was talking to Muhammad specifically in verse 15. Then he told Muhammad, so invite to that. Meaning, telling Muhammad to invite people to the, the deen, the one deen he has given them. And it is not Ali Sunnah. It is not Tariqa to Tijaniya. It is not Ahmadiyya. It is not Sufiya, Salafiya, Wahhabiya. It is not Ahmadiyya. It is not Qadiriya. Bear in mind, it is not Christianity. It is not Jehovah Witness. It is not Pentecost, Methodist. No, it is not Catholic. <laughs> you understand? Good. So invite to that and be upright. Then he says, what? Was Takim and be upright. Kema uh, um, Umirta. As you have been commanded, you see the law here. This is the legislation. God is the one in, in charge. He has the authority, so he gives you the rules you have to abide by. That is what we call Sharia. As you have been commanded, and do not follow the inclinations or people's inclination, their inclinations, and say, I have believed in what has been, what has, uh, what God has revealed of the book or of book. And I've been commanded to regulate between you. That is Muhammad speaking as a messenger. God is our Lord and your Lord. God is our Lord and your Lord. So he gives us rules, right? We have our deeds 
and you have your deeds. There is no argument between us and you. God will gather us all together, and to him is the destiny. So I just read the verses from chapter 42, verse 15, uh, verse chapter 42, verse 13 to verse what? Uh, verse 13 to verse 15. Quran chapter 42, verse 13, 4 as 15. So now God told him to invite to that. Huh? Falizalika fadu, uh, fadu. So by that, invite to that. Then he says, was, uh, was takin, and then be upright. Kema umirta, as you have been commanded. ahawahu, and do not follow their inclinations. Huh? Good. Then God asked him to say, Wakul, Amantu, Bima Anzalallahu Min Kitab. Aha, so I have believed in what God has revealed to me of what? Of the book, what, has, what God has revealed of the Kitab. Wa umirtu li adla bainakum. And I've been commanded to regulate, you understand, between you. That is, he has to be just between them to regulate in between people right aha uh -huh. so god then he says allahu rabbuna wa rabbukum allah is our god is our lord and your lord mm -hmm. lana amaluna walakum amalukum so to us is our deeds and to you is your deeds aha uh -huh. then he says la hujjata bainana wa bainakum and there is no argument between us and between you. There is no argument. Because we all know that it is God who has legislated the deen. And that we shouldn't be separated. So where is the concept of Christianity coming from? Where is the concept of uh, Judaism coming from? Where is the concept of uh, Ahli Sunnah, Shia coming from? So somebody will say, oh, then why Islam? Islam is an Arabic word. It only means submission. So what God wants from us is to submit to him. That is the religion. That's all it means. Islam doesn't mean the mainstream Islam you are looking at on television, showing you the Arabs. No. Or what you just saw in Nigeria, killing of the you know, uh, that uh, young lady. No, that is not Islam. Okay. So let's move on. <clears throat> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no really fun. If you had to see me, you could as actually pluck your eyes, take it out, or go and eliminate yourself, or bend the sea. You had to see this guy. You had to see me. <laughs> then who invited you to my platform? Why are these mushriks disturbing themselves like that? Hmm? Uh, Ras, Ras, save. I'm saving your question. I will answer them later. As soon as I finish, I will answer it, right? Uh -huh. So I've saved your question. I'll, I will refer to it and answer it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Sal uh, Shaifa, Salam, you are welcome. Uh, Swala Abdul Rahman, God bless you too. KG Dada, Salam. Yeah. Uh, salam, Abdul Razak, Naganka. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, Salam, Stao Bashir. Okay. So let's let's move on. Uh -huh. So now we see, according to Quran chapter 42, verse 13 to verse 15, we have seen. Now I'm taking you to Quran chapter 5 verse 48 and i want to show you something interesting in that verse quran chapter 5 verse 48 right that is surah al maida and i will share the screen let's see what the verse says and there's something interesting in that verse particularly i want us to pay attention concerning sharia and manhaj that is ideology of the way things should be done according to the way god has given us or shown us in his book so Quran chapter 5, verse 48, and let me share the screen, and let's see what the verse says. Yeah, so Dexter, you come. 
Quran chapter 5 verse 48. Here is verse. Now, what, what I want us to analyze in this verse has to do with also Sharia. But people don't actually know that uh, God has given different type of generations and group of people, different rules that they have to abide by. Most people don't know about this, right? Uh -huh. So what I'm going to is I'm going to break it down and help you to understand that notion. Now, in chapter, in chapter 5, verse 48, God, God told the prophet, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّكًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُحَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ Then he says, فَأَكُمُ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Now, the first part of this verse, God is telling the prophet, he says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ and we have revealed to you the Al-Kitab, right? bil that is with the truth or in truth. Then God says, Musaddikan lima bayna yadayhi, as a confirmation of what was, uh, for what was before it. Min Al-Kitab, that is of the book, because God gave all the prophets the book, Al-Kitab. Then God says, Wa muhayminan alayhi, to supersede over it, to become dominant over it, the word Muhaimin, it means to dominate something. Huh? So the act of the what God has revealed to the prophet, the book that he has revealed to you, is to serve as a confirmation of what was before it and to dominate, to supersede or to supervise over it, the previous book, uh, uh, Al-Kitab. So now God told the prophet, بينهم, So now judge between them, the Bainahum. The whom here denotes the people, mankind. So judge between them, bima anzalallah, by what God has revealed. So bima anzalallah, it is not talking about hadith or any garbage book, right? Read the verse above when it is starting, the first line of the verse. Wa anzalna ilayka al kitaba. This is what God has sent. So now God went further up to say, faakum. So what God has revealed is what we are going to use to judge the people. So that is the book of God. Now God told him, So and do not follow their inclinations after what has come to you of the truth. Because the book that God revealed to the prophet comes with the truth. That is why Quran chapter 3 verse 60 says, al min rabbika fala nanna min al The truth is from your Lord, so do not be of the doubters. So he has the truth in the book. Right? Good. So now, now God is going to tell the prophet in the same verse I'm reading. He says, likullin, uh, likullin, for each, that is each group, that the God told the prophet to use the book to judge between the people. Each of these groups, likullin ja'alna minkum ah shir'atan wa minhaja. For each of you, the groups, ah, the groups of people on earth, God says, ja'alna minkum. We have made for you shir'atan. This shir'atan is a law, legislation, right? Ah, bilarakat we have shara'a. You see, uh -huh. so that is the legislation. God has made a law for each of the group. Then he says, Wamin haja. That is a manage, a methodology, the way you do your things, the way things has to be done. That's methodology. Then now God says in that verse, Walau sha Allahu lajalakum ummatan wahida. Had God willed, He would have made you one nation. To join you together and become one nation. Then he says, Walakin liyabuluwakum fima atakum. However, mm, or so that in order what to test you concerning what he has given you by what he has given you. Then he says, First tabiku khairat. Then now he's saying, So race. Towards what the good 
the good deeds or what is good. Then he says, Ilallah marji'ukum jami'an. So it is to God he will assemble you, be assembled all together, or you will be retained. Uh, you come back. That is raja'a, to come back. He will return you to him altogether. Then he says, فَيُنَبِّيُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ تَكْتَلِفُونَ Then he will inform you of what you have been disputing about or the differences you have been having. He will inform you of everything. You see the difference? Uh -huh. So here in this verse, God says, لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْأَةً وَمِنْ هَاجَ for each, uh, 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 for each, we have made uh, for you, uh, minkum, of the groups, a law and a methodology. Now, this is very interesting. Just like today, when you go to every country on earth, they have the laws they have. They have particular laws they practice, but it's different from the law another country practices. You see, aha. Uh -huh. So we have different laws all over the world. A law that you commit in another country that will give you death sentence, that same act will not give you death sentence in another country. But here, we are only talking in relatively to God. We are not talking about people's laws, the laws people set for themselves. No, I'm talking about the godly aspect. That is the God's laws he has given to every group concerning the deen. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Now, that is Quran chapter 5, verse 48. So the interesting part of the verse I wanted people to pay attention is, God gave the prophet the Al-Kitab, the book, which is to be used for judgment between the people. So in the same book, we will have the law and we have the methodology. So the law is there and how to implement the laws is also in the Quran. So it's not just you have laws and then you go and do what you want. No, it doesn't work like that. So let's bear in mind concerning this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, salam, muti motive, same. Yeah, yeah, sal, sal, uh, shayfa, yeah. <laughs> Forget the mushriks, I'm not here for them, yeah. Uh, I was here now, good day. Uh, Abu Rashad, yes, you're welcome, bro. God bless you too. Now let's continue. So I've taken you to Quran chapter 42, verse 13 to 15, and Quran chapter 5, verse 48, just to show you something about the Sharia, the law that God gives us, right? So if you go to the previous book, the Torah, you will find certain laws which you don't find in the Quran, even though the Quran confirms the Torah. You go to the Injil, there are laws which has been given to the people of the Injil, which you might not find in the Quran, even though the Quran confirms the Injil. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, I'll be coming to that point where you will see the reason why I, I, I said what I just said, right? Good. Now, I'm taking you to Quran chapter 45, verse 18 to 19. Quran chapter... Quran chapter 45, verse 18 to 19. Uh, let me see here. That is Surah Al Jathia, verse 18. Then I'll share the screen. Let's see what the verse says. Yeah. So I'm going to show you the word. Sharia, and what it means and what has been given to the prophet to follow. The Sharia God is talking about has nothing to do with the worldly Sharia's we are seeing today. Like the laws you see Saudi Arabia using is, are not the laws and represent the laws of God. No, they are laws they take from the Hadith. You might think they are using the Quran, but not necessarily. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So let's go and see how the laws work and God is trying to follow him, right? Yeah, so let's see here. I take you to Quran chapter 45, 
18 to 19. Uh, and let's see what the verse is. Oh, this computer just froze. Why, why, why? Okay. Okay, yeah. So now I can share the screen. Let's see what the verse says. Oh, what just happened? Oh, this. This thing just acted up weirdly. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, now now we should work yeah now we should work yeah let's see the verse so chapter 45 verse 18 to 19 right that is surah al jatiya then i take you to verse 18 to 19 and let's see what god is telling us in that verse now, what people don't pay attention is when we see the Sharia, they think it is Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad setting forth his own rules in Islam, which is not the case. We saw in Quran chapter 42, verse 13, it was God who has legislated for us of the religion. The same religion he gave to Noah, what he has legislated, he gave to Abraham, he gave to Muhammad, he gave to Moses, he gave to Jesus, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So in Quran chapter 45, verse 18. He says, Then he says, What? So God is saying in Quran chapter 45, verse 18, Then we appointed you, that is you, Muhammad, second person pronoun, you, Muhammad, we appointed you upon, with, by, according to, that is, Laws, shari'atin, you see, laws of the what? Al-amr, that is the matter. So follow it. Fatabiha. So this, the, the word shari'atin is a feminine pronoun, uh, it's a feminine noun. Uh, so it has the tau marbut with the kasratain. Uh, for people who know the rough on nazbun jarrun, right? Uh, kesratain. So shari'atin, that is the laws that God has given, of the matter. So follow it and do not follow the inclinations of those who do not know. So follow the law that God has given you. You, Muhammad, <coughs> he has appointed you upon the law. So follow it of the matter. So now he told the prophet, follow it and do not follow the inclinations of those who do not know now verse 19 then he says indeed they can never avail you against god at all indeed the transgressors are allies of each other and god is the ally of the of the those who are pious <clears throat> now the interesting part of the verses i just uh i just read is God is now telling the prophet that he has appointed him upon the law of the matter and that he should follow it. So you see, the law that God is given is not outside the Quran. It is something you find in the Quran. So he has to follow it. Remember Quran chapter 28 verse 85. God says, Inna farada la ila mad. Inna farada Aha, indeed, the one who has enjoined the Quran upon you or on you will return you to a place of return. Yes. 
So God is the one who has enjoined the Quran, and you can find the laws of God in the Quran. So now God says, "Thumma jalnaka ala shariatin min al amr." Ah, so then we have appointed you upon the law, upon laws of the matter. You see, then God says, "So follow it, fatabiha, follow it. Don't follow something else." So that's why it says, and do not follow the inclinations of those who do not know. Because those ones cannot avail you against God at all. Anything. They can't. Now, what people should understand is, after God telling the prophet this statement, concerning the laws he has given concerning the matter, which prophets can find in the Quran, the act of judgment, whenever there is a law, there is also a judgment. For instance, if there is a law that do not go over the speed limit the government has set for you. So let's say the speed limit is 80 kilometers per hour. And then you are caught going 100 kilometers per hour. What do you think? What do you think the government should do to you? You are guilty, right? So there is always a, a punishment on the side and that becomes a judgment, hukmah. So we have sharia and then we have what? Hukmah. So now... We have seen in Quran chapter 45 verse 18, God is clearly telling the prophet how he has appointed him upon the laws of the matter. So now we are going to see if the laws are meant to be, if our laws are meant to be broken, right? If laws are there in the Quran, does it, do we have the judgment to go to, to, to strike whoever uh, what goes against the laws in some instances? The answer is yes. So let's go and see where God has given him the judgment as well. So I, I take you to Quran chapter 13, verse 37, right? Quran chapter 13, verse 37. And in this same verse, verse we are going to, God is again talking to the prophet. And now we are going to see clearly what God was instructing to the prophet concerning what? The judgment he has given him, right? Okay. So Quran chapter 13, then I take you to what? Verse 37. And see for yourself what God is saying. So now God says, "Wakazalika anzal nau hukman arabiyan." Then He says, "Wala ini tabata ahwaahum baada ma ajaake min al ilm, ma lakia min Allahi min waliyin wala waq." So God says, "And likewise have we revealed it as an Arabic judgment." So the Quran. God always use a masculine pronoun for it. So he says, Wakazalika anzal na hu. You see the who it denotes a masculine pronoun, which represents the book or the what the Quran. Always God use a masculine pronoun for it. Right? Uh -huh. So then he says, Hukman Arabian. As in what? When we say Arab Araba, Araba is to clearly express something is to declare something, is to make something clear. So God says, Hukuman, Arabian. It can be an express judgment, a clear judgment, but we can say an Arabic judgment in a simple, uh, simple, uh, simple form. In a simple form, we just say Arabic judgment because the judgments you find in the Quran are based in Arabic language, a language which expresses something as clear. So you have it clear so god says in quran chapter 3 verse 7 some of the verses are mukamat when you take the quran the verses are precise which can be used for judgment there is no two ways about it right then god told the prophet and if you should follow and if you should follow their inclinations after what had come to you of the knowledge, then God says, Malak Amin Wali, you will not have any uh what what you will not have any uh ally, which means a guardian, while I work or a protector against God. You will never have such a person. So God is now telling the prophet this. So we saw clearly Quran chapter 45, verse 18 talks about God appointing the prophet upon the laws of the matter. We now saw in Quran chapter 13, verse 37, God has what? Revealed it as an Arabic judgment. So we have the laws and we have the judgment in the same Quran. 
So now, which book did God ask the prophet to use for judgment? Did he ask him to use Sunnah? Did he ask him to use Sahih Bukhari? Uh, uh, Sahih Muslim? Or what did he ask him to use for judgment? Ask your scholars, the hypocritical scholars are doing today. They will tell you, you can never use Quran alone. You need to follow the judgment of the garbage hadith. Is that what God told the prophet in the Quran? The answer is no. So let's go and examine some of the lies of the scholars. What they keep telling the people, right? Good. So now I've already taken you to Quran chapter 45, verse 18 to 19. I took you to Quran chapter 13, verse 37. Now what I want you to pay attention is, Earlier on, when I told you about Quran chapter 5, verse 48, you saw when God was telling the prophet to use the book to judge the people. So he should judge the people by what God has revealed. And again, Quran chapter 5, verse 49 says the same thing also. And Quran chapter 4, verse 105 says the same thing that he should use the book to judge the people. So Quran chapter 5 verse 48, Quran chapter 5 verse 49, Quran chapter 5 verse 105 tells the prophets to use the book to judge the people. But you have foolish mushriks telling you just because Quran chapter 4 verse 65 says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ Harajan, mimma kodaita, wa yusalimu taslima. They will quote this verse, Quran chapter 4, verse 65, and then they say you have to make the prophet judge for you based on the sunnah and the garbage hadith they are claiming. Whilst God is telling the prophet in the Quran that he should use the book and judge the people. So you'll be a fool to think God asked Prophet Muhammad to use his opinion or to use any garbage book out there to judge you. Wallahi, you'll be a fool to think in that way. Good. Now, I've broken down that instance to let you understand what is going on here. Now, there is no instance whatsoever where God gave Prophet Muhammad his free will to use his own opinion to judge you. It doesn't exist. I'm going to give you an example. Quran chapter 66 verse 1. For any scholar who is telling you Muhammad is the judge and he has to use his own opinion to judge you. Give him this verse and ask him this question. Quran chapter 66 verse 1. And I'm going to share the screen. Let's see what the verse says. Quran chapter 66 verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Yeah. So for people who tell you Prophet Muhammad is the one who can give laws in the religion huh, without God approving it. Let's see. Quran chapter 66 verse 1. God is telling the Prophet, Ya ayyuwan nabiyu, lima tuharrimu, ma ahallallahu laka, tabtagi mardata azwajik, wallahu gafuru rahim. He says, oh you the Prophet, why do you prohibit what God has made lawful for you? Seeking the satisfaction or approval of your wives. And God is forgiving and merciful. You see here. So now, if this man has the audacity to le legislate for you in Islam, to use his own opinion to legislate, here we have God saying something is halal for him, and he made it haram for himself, just to have the satisfaction of his, of his wives. If he's not mistaken, why is God questioning him? If he has the right to make his own rules, why is God questioning him? Do you see the point? So if this man has his own free role in the religion, God shouldn't have questioned him here. For especially people who say, Wa anil hawa, that Muhammad never spoke anything from his own opinion, then what is this verse telling us? Or is it that these people lack understanding? As a messenger, he, he says exactly what he has been asked to say. As a prophet, he has his own normal life. Are you telling me if he has to sleep with his wives and he needs inspiration on how to sleep with his wives? And if he's going to shower, he needs inspiration before he can know how to shower himself? Do you understand? So something, sometimes mushriks, they lack their logic behind. Common sense is out of their coverage area. 
You understand? Uh -huh. So this prophet we are talking about, any judgment he has to do is based on what God has to say from his own book, not outside what God says. That is That will not be classified as Islam. So, so bear that in mind. Quran chapter 66 verse 1. For anybody who told you Prophet Muhammad is the one to judge and he is a lawgiver in Islam, give him this verse and tell him to explain to you. You see, okay. Now, apart from that, Yeah, salam. Uh, Zaman Badiu. Yeah. Adam Osman, you're welcome. Bonnie Abdullah. Yeah, Muktabu says salam. Yes. Uh, I started a bit late. That's why. So that's why maybe you missed. But I guess there's a playback after I finish, inshallah. So, so you get to watch, inshallah. Now, when you go to Quran chapter 7, verse 157, now, something that people refuse to understand in that verse is. God was only giving credence to the messenger in that verse and not the prophet. Quran chapter 7, verse 157. I just showed you, I just shown you something from Quran chapter 66, verse 1 to tell you that the prophet Muhammad himself doesn't have his own audacity to legislate in Islam for you. No. However, as a messenger, he has been given a privilege. In, in order to legislate based on what God has instructed him. So, for instance, Quran chapter 7, verse 157. God, when God was telling up to Moses, or he told Moses from 156, uh, 155, the conversation, the conference Musa and God had uh, with his people, God was telling him the criteria of the messenger to come later on. So, this messenger, God is explaining to us in Quran chapter 7, verse 156. And God says, who follow the messenger? Now, the messenger you are supposed to follow. Who is that messenger? Then God says, the unlearned prophet. You see, the unlearned prophet, which is a Nabiya al umiya the prophet who was what? Unlearned. According to Quran chapter 29, verse 48, he never recited any book or wrote any book prior to the Quran. He never recited any book in the past. But yes, he has recited the Quran. He never wrote any book in the past. But yes, he wrote the Quran. Quran chapter 96, verse 1 to verse 5. There's evidence he wrote the Quran. Quran chapter 25, verse 5 to verse 6. Even the disbelievers at his time bore witness that he wrote the verses of the Quran. Yes. So now God is telling you about the messenger. He says, who followed the messenger, the unlearned prophet, whom they found written with them in the Torah. He didn't say they found his name. Please pay, pay attention. The mushriks will go around telling you that Prophet Muhammad's name is in the Bible. You'll be nuts to think that way. There is no Prophet Muhammad's name in the Bible. That word you are seeing, Muhammadim or whatever, is, is not his name. <laughs> Uh -huh. It is a Hebrew word. It is not his name. Good. Who followed the messenger, the unlearned prophet, whom they found written with them in the Torah and the gospel? He commands them to kindness and forbid them from abomination and makes lawful for them the good things and prohibits for them the bad things. Now remember, a messenger you are supposed to follow. This messenger has two assignments, a prophet and a messenger, but you are following him as a messenger. First of all, the verse doesn't say who followed the prophet. He used the word who followed the messenger. Who is the messenger? The unlearned prophet. So you are following him as a messenger. A messenger has to do exactly what God commands. If you are going to follow him as a prophet, he has his own opinion. Just like we saw in Quran chapter 66 verse 1. He can forbid what God has made halal as a prophet. He has his own life. So pay, pay attention. You are only supposed to follow him as a messenger because he has a message to give you. So Quran chapter 28 verse 47. When messengers come, we only follow the verses of God through the messengers. Yes, because they bring you the messages from God. So now God says, he commands them to kindness and forbid them from abomination and makes lawful for them the good things, and prohibits for them the bad things, and takes off their burden from them, as well as the shackles 
which were upon them. Therefore, those who believe in him, I believe in the messenger. Honor him, I honor him. Support him, I'm supporting him by following the same message he also followed. And follow the light which was revealed with him, along with him, which is the Quran. That is the light, the book. Quran chapter 42 verse 52. That was the book which guided Muhammad. And God made it a light. And I'm also following the same book. What is your problem? You see, they are those who will be the successful. So he given, him given the audacity, the position to make lawful some things and forbid some things is based on his messengership duty, not as a prophet. Do you understand here? Following him as a messenger means God has to tell him something before he can tell you. If God hasn't told him to say that and he goes ahead to say it, it will be a crime against God. Just like he did in Quran chapter 66 verse 1. You saw the evidence, right? So let's not misconstrue these verses I'm quoting to you. They come with a context and understanding to it. Now, I've taken it to Quran chapter 66 verse 1 and I compared it to Quran chapter 7 verse 157. Right? Now, when I take you to Quran chapter 42 verse 21, I'm going to show you what the sectarian scholars usually do to people. Huh? Aha. Salam, my sister Rashida. Uh, salam, Momo Aleyu. Uh, Zara Komboy, you're welcome. Salam. So let's see. Quran chapter 42 verse 21 and i'll share the screen let's see what the verse says right quran chapter 42 verse 21 now salam mawia this verse i'm going to quote is to prove to you that if anybody has to give you legislation the authority must come from god if it doesn't come from God, then that the legislation becomes haram. So Quran chapter 42, verse 21. God is asking a question. Am lahum shuraka'u shara'u lahu min ad-din ma lam yazanu bi Allah wa law la kalimatul fasl lakudiya bainahum. Right? Then God says, wa inna inna zalimina lahum azabun alim. So God says, or do they have idols? That is shuraka. People you partner with God, right? Do they have idols who have legislated for them of the religion to which God has not given permission or authorized? Do they have such? Do you classify Prophet Muhammad as somebody who has to give you legislation which God has not authorized? So now Muhammad will tell you something is haram, even though God hasn't said it in his own book. So you believe that. So that instance, Muhammad becomes your idol. Yes. Because at that instance, he's not using the book of God. Quran chapter 45, uh, 44, five, Quran chapter 5, verse 44. Quran chapter 5, verse 45. Quran chapter 5, verse 47. Whoever does not judge by what God has revealed, he's a disbeliever, He's a, a transgressor and he's an immoral person. You are a disbeliever. So if you find a judgment and you tell me it's coming from Prophet Muhammad and we cannot find it from what God has revealed, then you are a kafir. I'm not saying it. God is saying it. So God is asking in Quran chapter 42 verse 21. Am lahum shuraka'u shara'u lahum min ad-din ma'alam yazanu bi Allah. Or do they have idols, uh, your associates, the one you associate with God, right? Do they have uh, your idols who have legislated for, for them, for you, min a din of the religion to which God has not given permission? Do you have such? Then God says, If not for the decisive word, then God will have settled between them. وَإِنَّ الزَّالِمِينَ لَهُمْ عَزَابٌ uh, Ali. And indeed, the transgressors will have a painful punishment. So pay attention to this verse I just quoted. 
Quran chapter 42, verse 21. It's very, 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 very important. Now, <clears throat> yeah, salam, uh, DMS, Yusuf, long time. Aha, uh -huh. so now, if you understand the notion of Quran chapter 42, verse 21, now I'm taking you to Quran chapter 6, verse 148, to show you something interesting before I move on to other verses to make a point. So Quran chapter 6, verse 148. When you go to Quran chapter 6, verse 148, God is telling us concerning people who associate idols, right? So those who associate others or those who idolize will say, if God had willed, we will not have idolized or associated others. And neither will, have, will, will our fathers, nor will we prohibit anything. You understand? Because their idols prohibit things for them. Give them laws to prohibit things. You see? So God now says, likewise did those before them lie. They keep lying like that. Until they tasted our torment. Say, do you possess any knowledge? Then produce it for us. Produce it. Bring your proof. Bring it. Let's check your evidence. Is it your Sahih Bukhari? Your Jamia Tirmidhi? Your uh, Sahih Muslim? They are all garbages, not from God. Right? You only follow assumption and you are only guessing. That's all you do. Because you can't bring the Burhan from God. There's no proof. Can you prove the Sahih Bukhari you are following where God gives permission to that? You can't prove it. Sahih Muslim, prove it. You can't. You see the problem. They are only guessing. Because they think their idols have given them laws to follow. Right? If you go to Quran chapter 16 verse 116. That is Surah to Nahal. Quran chapter 16 verse 116 and i tell you what god says in that verse another verse that people are playing with and they have no idea whatsoever god is commanding us concerning uh, uh, how to, not to prohibit things because lo your legislation your laws your rules have to come from god the book of god alone nobody else quran chapter 18 verse 26 he does not partner any, anyone in his judgment, in his rule. Quran chapter 18, verse 26. God doesn't partner with anybody in his judgment or his rule. So stop partnering Prophet Muhammad with God in terms of judgment. You'll be a fool to do that. Quran chapter 16, verse 116. And do not say, Wala takulu lima tesifu kaziba. Haza halalu wa haza haram. Litaftaru ala lahi le kaziba. Inna lazina yaftaruna ala lahi le kaziba la yafluun. La yufluun. And do not say a lie by what your tongues describe. This is halal and this is haram. To fabricate a lie about God. Indeed, those who fabricate lies, that is falsehood about God, will not succeed. Because this is what we have today. People will bring laws which you cannot find in the Quran. Will tell you necklace is haram. You ask them, prove to me, where is the verse? Uh, so you don't believe necklace is haram? I didn't say you are lying. I say, where is the verse? That is this. So you don't believe in the sunnah of the prophet? You see the fool. What do you mean about believing the sunnah? I'm asking you, where is the verse God says is haram? They will start quoting Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Muslim. You see how mushriks are. You understand? Good. So then God says, indeed, those who fabricate falsehood about God will not succeed. Islam belongs to God. The religion you are in is belongs to God. Who has to give you the rules? Is it your idols? So Quran chapter 33 verse 67. On the day of judgment, they will tell God, Kalu Rabbana inna atana sadatana wa kubara ana fadaluna sabila. They will say, our Lord, we have obeyed our leaders and our elders, but they misled us from the way. Because this is what you do. You keep obeying your leaders, your scholars, telling you stuffs. You don't investigate. You don't ask for a burhan from the godly perspective. Then you take it and believe it. You take your salvation for granted. Good luck. 
Now, Quran chapter 10, verse 59. Quran chapter 10, verse 59. Yeah, salam, Alaja Atal Mahmoud. Salam, Muhammad Kamal Din. You're welcome. I take you to Surah to Yunus. Then I take you to verse 59. And let's see. Yeah. Uh, time i'm almost bringing the topic an end so that i can answer some questions before i go uh but let's see let's see this last verse i have to give quran chapter yeah that is surah to yunus quran chapter 10 verse 59 god is asking the messenger say have you considered what god has revealed or sent down of sustenance and you make some of it unlawful and lawful. Some of it you make halal, uh, haram, and some of it you make halal. Say, has God permitted you? He Has he given you permission to do that? Or do you fabricate falsehood or lies about God? You see the question God is asking. Quran chapter 10 verse 59. God is the one who created us. He gave us the religion. He gives He gives us the rules. Right? He gives, he gives us the laws. He is the legislator. So now he has made things for us, and you people start classifying it as halal and haram. Has he given you permission to do that? Or are you fabricating lies about God? God is asking you a question. Quran chapter 10, verse 59. You see what people do. God has given his own rules and re uh, regulations that we need to abide by. Le let me share um let me share the, the screen to the verse uh quran chapter 10 s59 Yeah. Now, Quran chapter 10, verse 59. It says, say, let me put it well. He says, say, have you considered what God has sent down to you of sustenance? And you make some of it unlawful and lawful. Say, has God permitted you or do you fabricate about God? Cool. Has God permitted you? Or are you just fabricating? Or do you just fabricate about God? So now we can see the loss has to come from the book of God. If somebody comes to me and says, God has made necklace haram. My simple question to you is prove it. Bring your proof. Let's check. Where in the Quran did it say necklace is haram? So from today, any intellectual person listening to me, whatever somebody tells you something is haram in Islam, ask him for proof. Tell him to bring a verse which says that thing is haram. Simple. Don't don't tell him you are lying. Don't tell him, oh, I believe. No, just tell him, bro, I need a verse. Give me, I'm going to check. I'll go and ask uh, my, my people, somebody who's knowledgeable than me to check. Simple. This is where you catch their lies, especially the imams and the scholars you see around you. Wallahi. Most of them are liars. Uh -huh. So bear that in mind, right? Good. Yeah, salam, Murtaza uh, Ramatullah. Aha. Uh Muktabu is saying I save your question. I'll be coming. I'm almost going to open the, the, the line for calls and questions. And when you go to Quran chapter 2, verse 168, it says, Oh, you mankind, eat from what is on earth lawful and good, and do not follow the steps of the devil. Indeed, he is a clear enemy to you. 
So God is telling mankind, not only believers, oh, you mankind, eat from what is on earth, lawful, halal, and good. So it is not only about halal. It has to be good to be consumed also. Uh, and do not follow the steps of the devil. Chapter 16, verse 144. So eat from what God has provided for you, lawful and good, and be thankful for the blessing of God, if it is him you worship. That is Quran chapter 16, verse 114. Now, Quran chapter 5, verse 87. When you go to Quran chapter 5, verse 87, let me see if I can put the verse on the screen. Surah Al-Ma'idah. Then I take you to verse 87. Uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 87. And let's see if I can share the screen for that. Right? Verse 87. Yeah? Let's see. Can I share the screen? Uh... Chapter 5, verse 87. So I'll put it on the screen. Then we see what the verse says. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, chapter 7. God says, Ya you are Lazina Amanu. La tu harimu tayyibatin ma ahalallahu lakum wala tatadu inna Allah la yuhibbul muhtadin. O you who believe, do not prohibit good things which God has made lawful for you and do not trespass. Indeed, God does not like the trespasses. Now you see what God is telling the believers. He says, oh, you who believe, do not prohibit good things which God has made lawful and do not trespass. Indeed, God does not like the trespasses. Do you see the verse clearly? Now, when you go to Quran chapter 66 verse 1, you can see God was clearly questioning the prophet and he's saying, Ya you wa nabi, lima tu harrimu, ma ahalallahu laka, tapta ji mardata azwajika wallahu gafuru rahim. So the prophet made a mistake by prohibiting what God has made lawful for him. You see the mistake here. So as a prophet, you are claiming you have to follow his sunnah, the, the sunnah of the prophet. That is, is, did God ask you to follow that? Come and show me in the Quran. Don't go and quote verses out of context and you say, Wama atakum rasul fakhuzu, wama anakum anu. Okay, no problem. Wama atakum rasul fakhuzu. No problem. Where did the prophet give you Sahih Bukhari to follow? Where? Come out of your hypocrisy. Come and open the Quran. Show me where the Prophet asked you to follow Imam Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari. Somebody he has never met. Somebody who started writing hadith over 200 years after the Prophet. He is now bringing you garbages to tell you that the Prophet said so, so and so. And you believe that whilst going against the Quran out of foolishness. And you want you don't want to use your reasoning. And you are claiming wa ma rasul. He gave you Sahih Bukhari to follow. He gave you Sahih Muslim. Does he, is he aware of the books? Did he ever even prophesy about Sahih Imam Bukhari? He doesn't, you don't have such an hadith. You understand? So now if God is telling you that the prophet even made a mistake by forbidding something that God made lawful for him, you see a foolish mushrik asking you, okay, what did he prohibit for, for himself? Do I need to know that? Or are you saying God lied when God told him, why did you prohibit? So meaning the prophet didn't prohibit anything? Quran chapter 5 verse 87, that verse is clearly telling you, oh, you who believe. Are you saying the prophet is not a believer also? <laughs> so as a messenger, he does exactly as it has been commanded. But as a prophet, he's a human being. To air his human, 
because he's using his own opinion. Quran chapter 34, verse 15. Kul in the Lord to fa'inna ma adillu ala nafsi. This is what the prophet said. He says, if I should err, I will only err against myself. He didn't say God caused him to err. He didn't say, oh, God wants me to err. No. If I should err, then it's only based on me. That is himself. He has decided to err. Then he says, wa in itadaitu fabima yuhi ilayya rabbi. If he is guided, then it is by what God has inspired to him. So only God wants to guide him. So whatever God will tell him to do is the right thing. Whatever he will choose to do, that is up to him. So Quran chapter 4 verse 79, God clearly told him, whatever good comes from, uh, happens to him is from God. Whatever bad happens is from him. Because God will never ask the prophet or messenger to go and do something bad. Unless he chose, he chose for himself. So pay attention to that. You see, aha. Uh -huh. Yes. That's what they keep doing. They keep saying haram, 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 haram. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Musa Shaib, salam. Uh, yeah, yeah, Fatima Chin, that's what they keep saying. They will tell you this is haram, prawns are haram, crab is haram. This is uh, what Mushriks will do every day, right? Mm -hmm. Now, so now let me take you to what God has sanctioned you for you, right? When you go to Quran chapter 6, verse 151, God asked the messenger to say to the people, now when we say sanction, muharrama, to sanction something, we are talking about conforming to octodos or recognized rules that God has given. The second meaning is formally approved and invested with legal authority. It's just like saying sharia, a law, right? Third meaning, established by authority, giving authority or approve, authoritative approval. So when we say God has sanctioned something, there are rules God has sanctioned for us to abide by. So for instance, Quran chapter 6, verse 151, when I read to 153, it says, say, good, let me see if I can put the verses on the screen so that people will be watching as I'm reading it. So Quran chapter 6, Verse 151, and I'm going to read it to 153. Then we got to we get to see what God has sanctioned for us as believers, right? Yes. Uh huh. Yes, I put this this uh, there's this thing on the screen. Then you get to see what God has instructed. Yes. So Quran chapter six, verse 151. Yeah, Quran chapter 6, verse 151. God told the prophet to say, Say, come, I will recite what your Lord has what? Has sanctioned to you. That do not associate anything with him. And be good to both parents. And do not kill your children out of abject poverty, in lack. We provide for you as well as for them. And do not approach obscenities what is apparent thereof and what is hidden and do not kill a soul which god has forbidden except by justice meaning by right that he has advised you thereby perhaps you will reason 152 and do not approach the property of an orphan except by that which is best until he reaches his maturity and fulfill measure and balance in justice we do not charge a soul except by its capacity. And when you speak, then be just, even if it is of a relative, and fulfill the agreement of God that he has advised you thereby. Perhaps you will take heed. 153. And moreover, this is my straight path, so follow it. And do not follow ways, then you will be separated from his way that he has advised you thereby perhaps you will become pious do you see what god has sanctioned for you now similarly if i take you to quran chapter 17 then i read from verse 22 to verse 39 you will see what god has sanctioned for you of wisdom 
Now, the wisdom, the hikmah that God has given us is a set of rules made by law as hukum that you have to abide by. That shows how wise you have become in your life. So Quran chapter 17, I'm going to read to from verse 22 and to verse 30 before we end the program for today. Right? Then I'll give the chance for the, the questions of answers which were already happened. Then I can answer them. Uh, Mutabu says, what, what, tattoo? Tattoo, I've already, if you go to, uh, Mutabu is saying, if you go to Quran chapter 4, verse 119, right? It talks about changing the creation of God, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So I don't advise that. As for, as for henna, using henna, it can be wiped out. So that, that is not changing the, the, the skin or something. But tattoo, I don't advise. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mark, is it? And Richmond, I appreciate the support. Thank you. Jobless, thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, Abdul Samad Adam, this is what Mushriks will tell you. They will tell you crab is haram. They do that a lot. Aha. Uh -huh. So, oh, what is. happening with them yeah uh let me check it's one hour 30 minutes yeah 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 it's true that's that's what they do actually making it so can I so labor Baba Lepa now, Rimana. Nazwa, or Nazwa, Jen Nazwa, Numbaka, Nazwa. And Nazo and Zungon or Selim Yankuri, Nazwa, Naksakari, or Baring Seva, Binga, Kakao, Damo Yankuri. Aha. Uh, okay. So let, let me share the screen. I'm coming. Just a minute. I just need to give some to Salim. He's he's asking for something here. Yeah, just a minute. Any person, any scholar, sister, says anything, ask for proof. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 111, Kul hatu bunanakum, produce your proof in kuntum sadiqin, but if you're truthful. Any scholar, therefore what I say, that what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. No value. What Allah says, carry weight. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So let me see. I don't know. Yeah. The screen, when I share the verse, is it clear enough for people to see? Uh, let me try to maximize it to see. Okay, 
So from starting from chapter 17, verse 22, I'm going to read to verse 39. Let's see what it says. It says, do not assign another God with the God. Then you will remain. Okay, let me see this. I'm just trying to get it in the right font to, to make it easy for people to, to see the, the verse on the screen. Yeah. Do not assign another God with the God, then you will remain censored and helpless, right? Then verse 23, and your Lord has decreed. Yeah, verse 23, and your Lord has decreed that do not worship except him. Now, for people who like to always say, okay, uh, the word ta'abudu cannot mean uh, worship. It means only serve. That This verse will contradict their understanding. Because if God says, and do not serve, except him. Are you telling me when you go to work for your boss, you don't serve him? Are you going to, are you going to tell me in life you don't serve other people when it comes to service? You understand? So... Taibudu doesn't, it's not limited. It has multiple meanings based on the context you use it. But yes, to say to worship is what we do for God. For people who say there is no act of worship in the Quran, ask them to translate chapter 5, verse 54 to you. It, consi in cons it consists loving God as well. The love you adore for God is part of worship. Now, when we say we worship, you are devoted to God, you adore God. It consists a lot of things that you do for God, right? Following his rules is part of the worship. So it's not only about service. And your Lord has decreed not to worship except him. So when it comes to worshiping, it's exclusively for God alone. You understand? Uh -huh. So, and your Lord has decreed not to worship except him and be good to the parents, right? You have to be good to the parents. So whether one of them reaches old age with you or both of them, then do not say to them, ah, nor shall you rebuff them, but speak to them a noble speech. You see, now, when you go to verse uh, 24, it says, and lower to them the flank of humility out of mercy and say, Lord, have mercy upon them as they raise me small. Verse 25. Your Lord is aware of what is within your souls. If you should be righteous, then indeed he is forgiving to those who repent. Verse 26, and give the relative his due, as well as the poor and the wayfarer, and do not squander extravagantly. Verse 27, indeed, the squanderers are breeding of the devils, and the devil is ungrateful to his Lord. Verse 28, and if you should turn away from them, seeking the mercy of your Lord, which you expect, then speak to them a gentle speech. Verse 29. <clears throat> oh, why is this? It's la There's a lecture here. Yeah. Verse 29. And do not place your hand shackle to your neck, nor shall you extend it completely in extension. Then you will remain blamed and exhausted. Verse 30. Indeed, your Lord extends sustenance to whomever he wills and limits. Indeed, he is to his servants conversant and seen. Verse 31, and do not kill your children for fear of abject poverty. We provide for them as well as for you. Indeed, killing them is a big mistake. Verse 32, and do not approach fornication, adultery. Indeed, it is an obscenity and an evil way. Verse 33, and do not kill a soul which God has forbidden, except by justice, that is by right. And whoever is killed unjustly, then we have assigned the authority to his her. But he, the her, shall not transgress regarding the murder. Indeed, he shall be aided, or he should be aided. And do not approach the property of an orphan, except by that which is best, until he reaches his maturity. So fulfill the agreement. Indeed, the agreement will be accountable. That is verse 34. Verse 35, oh, and fulfill a measure whenever you measure and weigh with a straight scale. 
that is better and best in interpretation. Verse 36, and do not pursue what you have no knowledge about. Indeed, the hearing, the eyesight, and the mind, all those will be accountable thereof. Verse 37, and do not walk on earth exultantly. Indeed, you can never tear the earth, nor can you reach the mountain in height. Verse 38, all that which is evil is detested, de uh, detested to your law. Then verse 39, that is from what your Lord has inspired to you of the hikmah. You see the al-hikmah. That is from what your Lord has inspired to you of the what? Al-hikmah. So do not assign another God with the God. Then you will be cast into hell, blamed and defeated. So he repeated, God repeated the chapter 17, verse 22. He repeated it in verse 39 to make you see some of what he has inspired of the wisdom, the hikmah. So the hikmah is not outside the Quran. It's based in the Quran. Even if you go to Quran chapter 33, verse 34, you will see what God says concerning how we can find the hikmah in the verses of God. You see, aha. Uh -huh. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what you have as the rules, the sharia from God, that you find it in God. You don't go outside the Quran to go and find the sharia. For people who say sharia law, you find it in other books, Sahih Bukhari. No, it doesn't come from there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so now let me move to the questions that people ask. I've started about... Uh, let me see. Before I move to the questions, this guy is saying something. Uh -huh. Before I move to the question, I think Dexter, Dexter was saying something. Let me share it on the screen. He says, it is now clear to me that some of our scholars who go to the Middle East to study are trained. They are trained to come back and mislead their own people. It is like a strategy to prevent Africans from waking up from their slumber. Yes, that is true. I agree with you. And again, he said what? Today, this is haram. Tomorrow, that is haram. This is how these mushriks managed to drive our forefathers into poverty. Obviously. Obviously, that's how they did. Imagine if the, the mushriks were in charge of the gold in Ghana. They would have burned it all. They have... <laughs> They will have killed uh, Otu for a long time ago for wearing the, the gold and, and then the this thing he wears. You understand? The Mushriks, and this is how it's not easy. Why is it? Mm. Okay, let me go to the people's questions and answers before I go. So, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Gaddafi asked a question. He says, Please explain this Quran, chapter 9, verse 84, is the part of the Salatul Janaza. Uh, Chapter 9, verse 84 is not talking about Salat al Janaza. We, there's no Salat of funeral mentioned in that verse. And that verse is not talking about Salat. Huh? That verse, I have a video, it's called the funeral prayer. It's a short video, right? And it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, I will send you the link, Muhammad Gaddafi. The explanation is on my YouTube channel. It's a short video. There's no such thing as Salat al Janaza. Ch Quran chapter 9, verse 84 has nothing to do with Salat. Neither is it Salat al Janaza. When God was saying, let me see if I can put the verse here. That's Quran chapter 9, Surah to Tawbah. Then you go to verse 84, right? Verse 84. So let me see if I can share the screen concerning that verse, the question he just asked, right? Yeah. So the verse is wala tusalli ala ahadin minhum mata abada wala takum ala kabrihi innahum kafaru billahi wa rasulihi. Then he says wa matu wa hum fasikun. So the verse is saying and do not reach out to any one of them uh, this mata for instance if you take a verb in arabic Unlike, unlike English, we can have a present continuous, which is, I am going to school. I am coming home. 
you see, you can see the ing as a present continuous. Now, in Arabic, they don't have that formality. So if you have a verb, for instance, if you say he's going home, you have to say Zahaba il al bayt. Zahaba il al bayt. He is going home or he goes to home. Simple. Just same thing like that. So you can't, they don't have the way that they have that present continuous that you have to put it. Uh, like I am going to school. Unless if you are translating it, then you put it in English as I am going to school. So in this context, the matter is an act of dying. The person is not dead yet. So God is saying, and do not reach out to anyone among them who is what dying. Present continuous. The matter is the same form as a verb to die. Then God says, Walata kum. Allah kabirihi and do not stand around or over or by his grave. So when the person is about to die, you don't reach out to them in order to to communicate or do something. This act of reaching out is to show your support to help and communicate. We saw this notion in Quran chapter nine verse one zero three. It is only an act you do to people who are alive. Quran chapter thirty three verse forty three. It is only an act. You do it, God does it with his angels to only people who are alive. Quran chapter 33 verse 56, it is only an act that uh, we believers and God do to the prophet whilst he was alive. It is not when somebody is dead. It's not talking about salat. It is not talking about prayer. So I have a video on YouTube which breaks down the grammatical aspect of the salli uh, Allah. It is not about salat. So people should understand this. Yeah. Then his next question, let me see. His next question, he says, is the part of Salat, he says, is any voluntary fast in, in the Quran? As for volu voluntary fasting, it depends on you, the individual, the believer. I think in Quran chapter 33, verse, verse 33 to 35. Uh, let me see if I can confirm the verse. Quran chapter 33. Uh, says Quran chapter 33 verse 35 yeah Quran chapter 33 verse 30, 35 it mentioned the set of uh, uh believers Muslims a Muslim woman a man a Muslim woman a believing man a believing woman it keeps going in that order and it mentioned those who abstain who observe the abstinence right now the act of doing a voluntary abstinence is based on any individual who is a believer you can choose to do it there's no restriction where it says you cannot do a voluntary abstinence right it is allowed you can do it uh it says like 12th and 13th day monday and thursday fasting that is that still depends on you the believer if you want to do it like that way fine but there's no command from god where it says you must fast monday and when a thursday no it's not like that now, Bashir Yusuf says, did Allah say, let me, let me put the question here. Bashir Yusuf says, did Allah say in the Quran that whoever opposed Allah and his messenger should be killed? No, it doesn't say it in that context. Uh, when you go to Quran chapter 5, verse 33, right? Quran chapter 5, verse 33. At the time when the messenger was alive, right? At the time when the messenger was alive, I'm going to put the verse on the screen. And let's see what it says. Yeah, Quran chapter 5, verse 33. At the time when the messenger was alive, this is what God says in the Quran concerning that instance you just asked, right? It doesn't necessarily say whoever opposed God and his messenger in that sense. It says, but instead it says, إِنَّمَا جَزَاءُ الَّذِينَ uh, يُحَارِبُونَ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَهُ Those who wage war, we have war against God and his messenger. Because God has sent his messenger and then we have people who wage war. Just like we see in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 1, you read the whole chapter, you understand that. Ah. Uh, and then these people, they wage war against God and his messenger, meaning they don't want the laws of God to, to, to transpire on the land. 
So what they want to do is they watch way war against the religion of God. And then they what? Uh, yes, yes, awuna fil ard fasada. And then they strive on earth with corruption. They want corruption to rather strive on earth. Huh? They want corruption to rather strive on earth, meaning to do away with the laws of God and everything and then bring corrupt corruption on earth. Then now God says their punishment, their penalty is what? To be killed, number one, or to be crucified, number two, or that is crucifixion from the alternative uh, sides of the hand and the leg, or to be what? Banished from the land. So it's an option. It's not like they should do all these penalties to the person. It depends on the magnitude of the what the crime the person has done. Somebody will say, why will you just kill somebody? Let me tell you something. In Indonesia, when you are caught with cocaine, they will sentence you to death. In Singapore, they might do the same. In uh, United States, there is Guantanamo prison, Guantanamo Bay prison. They do pe put people on death row and they kill people for certain crimes they have done. We understand. So based on that time of the messenger, those who wage war against God and his messenger and then strive for corruption on earth, their penalty, and it comes with options, is either to be killed, sentenced to death, or crucified, or banished from the land. So it's just options. It doesn't mean anybody who opposes God and the messenger should be killed. God never says that. Quran chapter 33 verse 57. God never asks anybody to go and kill anybody unless to say what? Leave the person with God. God would rather deal with the person. That's what it says. Uh, let me see. Uh, the last, another question was asked. Uh, Rasev says, I want to know, apart from Angel Gabriel, did Allah himself ever spoke to Muhammad directly? And which verse can it be found? Now, Directly, I would say, uh, I wouldn't say directly because they, they never met. But anytime God wants to instruct Muhammad, it's based on inspiration, right? It is based on inspiration. When you go to Quran chapter 42, verse uh, 51, it is not for God to speak to a man. He only gives inspiration or speaks to you behind the hijab, right? But as for the notion of he speaking to Muhammad directly, there is no verse which says they have met directly. He has met God directly. No. It was rather the Ruhul Qudus or the Holy Spirit, or we can say the Ruhul Amin, who brought down the Quran to Muhammad. But as for inspiration, yes, he does have inspirations from God. Yes, he has been inspired by God. Yes. Uh that is for the answer. You can find it in Quran, Quran chapter uh, 25, verse 5 to verse 6, when the people said he has fabricated he, uh, tales of the past which he transcribed with his hands. Then he says he was revealed by God. Right? Muktabul Hussain says, This is the last question I will answer because I have to go. It's late here. He says, Whether Malaika assists Allah to run his unseen administration. Uh, the answer can be found in Quran chapter 17, verse 111. We don't say we don't say they assist him. Right? Uh, there is a difference. There's a difference. For instance, a president has a vice president, and we all know the duty of the vice president. The duty of the vice president is to assist the president. That's the duty. But when you have a boss and he employs you to work for him, we don't say you are assisting him. We don't use such a word because he has employed you, so you are serving him. You understand? So angels are the servants of God. They don't assist God. They are his servants. Uh, so someone who is your servant is rather following rules to serve you, but not to assist you. I hope you understand this combination here, Muktabul Hussain. So there's a difference in understanding here. We don't say angels are assisting God. So the answer is found in Quran chapter 17, verse 111. The answer is there. He does not have any partner in his dominion. Uh, or out of weakness to have somebody to assist and say, oh, uh, this one God cannot do, so uh, the angels have to do for him. No. And again, 
Quran chapter 7, verse 206, you find the answer there concerning that. It tells you the position of the angels as his servants. So when someone is your servant, we don't say he's assisting you. He's rather following your uh, instructions to do something because he's beneath you. So he's not your assistant. Uh -huh. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think I will have to end the program. Uh, let me see. I think people wrote some things I didn't see. Uh, uh, Isaac Coleman says, he says, stop using God when talking about the Quran. Uh, you are speaking out of ignorance. Go and read Surah to Nas, uh, chapter 113. Try to read that chapter and 114. Huh? He says, uh, nas. Then he says, Malikin Nas. Then he says, Ilahin Nas. The word Ilahi in Arabic, it means God. So he says, Deity or God of mankind. So if I call Allah God, there's nothing wrong because he is the right, he is the true God, the original God. I can choose to call him God. He called himself in the Quran, Suratul Nas. Uh, chapter of mankind or the people he call himself god of mankind so if i call him god there's nothing wrong with that so isaac coleman don't speak out of ignorance right aha uh -huh. uh. Uh, uh, Musa Shribe, Musa Shribe is asking a question. Let me see. Musa Shribe is asking a question. Let me see if I have time to answer that. And uh, he's asking concerning Hori Ain. He's talking about Hori, Hori assistants. For people who have my version of translation, you can check and combine. Hori assistants are just like in this modern day, I would say waitress, somebody who is a waitress helping out with something. Uh, they are not actually the sexual, uh, for, for sexual purpose, no. So when you say Hori assistants, some people will say Hori Ain is talking about the eyes on, no. Uh -huh. So there's, there's a, I need to do a topic on this to break it down. Uh, As the Coleman says, angels are humans like us, if you have brains and not like the mushriks. Uh, Isaac Coleman, can you prove to us where angels are like humans? Prove to us. So it means we have a female angel, according to your understanding. If you say angels are humans like us, so that means we have female angels. Can you prove to us, using your own understanding, bring your verse or your book, of authority show us where it says angels are humans please <laughs> oh my god okay ladies and gentlemen uh, this is where I, I need to bring the topic to an end uh mosaddiq mosaddiq mosad uh mosaddiq jibril says he says, finally, all those who acquired their knowledge from our colonial master are, are the what? Mitochondria of enslaving Africans. Baba, can you help me secure knowledge as you are? All the help I can do is what I'm doing now, to come here and lecture people from what I have studied myself for years of my research and knowing, and then they can also uh, study. You see, aha. Uh -huh. Oh, Isaac, Isaac Coleman, what kind of ignorance are you doing right now? 
He says, Gabriel is a name of an angel. And Gabriel is a human being. <laughs> I say, Colma, this is ignorance. I know you believe in Selassie. You call Selassie your God, right? So Selassie, is it a human name or a dog's name? Tell us. <laughs> he said, Gabriel is a... So because Gabriel is a human name, that's what makes him a human. Oh, come on. That's not, that's not how name works. Eh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I will end now. I have, to, I have to go and do something now. So my time, two hours is enough. Uh, we, we keep in touch again, God willing, uh, inshallah, uh, next week. And let's see what happens. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. I appreciate it and the support. Uh, yeah, Mawia, uh, forget him. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> okay, Sister Al-Bashir, thank you very much. Uh, God willing, I hope you're feeling better now. Uh, Fatima Chin, yes, peace be upon you all. Uh, Abdul Samad, thank you very all. I appreciate your time and support. Uh, Baba Sidu, Salis, uh, Starashida Mohammed, uh, Tujis, the realist. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Isaac Koma says, Haile Selassie is a name like Baba Shrive. But you say Haile Selassie is your God. <laughs> so your God has a name like me. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. This is where I end the topic for now. Subhana Rabbi Izzati Amma Isifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And this is where I drop the topic for now. Thank you very much. It's manish tarata sharatan laysa fi kitab illa. This is a principle that everyone should apply, including yourself. That do not impose in anything that you do in your life. Do not impose in anything that you do a condition that you do not find that condition in the book. So alhamdulillah, you have just proven that the sunnah takes us back to the Quran. The sunnah tells us go to the Quran and see the laws that are in the Quran. Whatever laws you find there, don't apply it to, uh, if it's not in the book of Allah, don't apply it to your life.